بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ali Islami and I will be teaching the science of syntax or as you know, Almun Nahu, Arabic grammar, insha'Allah ta'ala. From what I've been told, those of you who, who will be uh, hearing these lessons have passed an elementary level in Arabic grammar. So by now, you must know the many benefits of Arabic grammar and you would realize that how much uh, this science, how big a role it plays in understanding the Holy Quran and Hadith. For instance, when you uh, come by some of the verses of the Qur'an, the tricky verses, those that would appear misleading if not considering the arab of the words, I call them tricky verses because they may appear misleading. But if you uh, know the arab, if you have learned all the kinds of arab, then you will not misunderstand these tricky verses. If you know that the maf'ul or the object should be mansub, and that the fa'il, the object, should be marfu', then you won't have a problem when coming across these verses that may appear misleading when not knowing the i'rab. For instance, when you come across the verse, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim," "Inna ma yakhsha Allah min ibadih al-ulama." When you look at the translation of the verse, you would see that the translators say, "Only those fear Allah from among His servants." Who have knowledge? The ayah means that only the ulama fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is after you know the i'rab. See, if you don't consider the i'rab, if you don't know what the fath on Allah means, and you don't know that the dhamma on ulama, that it means it's it's fa'il, then you would misunderstand this verse. You would translate it and understand it like this, that Allah fears from the ulama, only the ulama. The only servants that he fears are the ulama. If you don't understand the i'rab and that ulama is fa'il, and Allah is maf'ul, then this is how you would translate the verse. You would think it means that Allah only fears the ulama. But after passing an elementary level in Ilm nahu you realize, you understand that, no, this verse, uh, when you, you, you could recognize the fa'il and the maf'ul by the i'rab, then you would know that it means that the ulama are the only ones that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another example for a tricky verse is this ayah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ If you look at the translation in the Quran, it says Allah rejects 
the pagans, the mushrikeen, he rejects the pagans and his messenger. Allah bari'un min al mushrikeen wa rasuluhu would seem at a first glance, would like seem like this that Allah rejects his messenger also. But when you look at the i'rab of Rasuluhu and you see that Rasul is marfu' then you realize that Allah doesn't reject his messenger. No, Allah rejects the pagans and so does his messenger. And this will only, you will be, you will be able to understand this in a correct manner if you know the qawa'id of i'rab so from what you have learned so far you won't have a problem with these tricky verses but when facing controversial verses in the quran what you have learned so far may not help you that much you see we have Verses in the Quran that they are very controversial, that Islamic scholars, Muslim scholars have a, a big difference in understanding these verses and deriving verdicts from these verses. Controversial verses in the Quran that you see uh, the religious sects in Islam have fundamental differences regarding them. Differences in theology, differences in Islamic law and jurisprudence. When it comes to these verses, you see that the sects, the religious sects in Islam, they have lots of differences regarding the, the way they do wudu, like for instance. You see the, uh, the verse of wudu, it's one of the most controversial verses in the Quran. Because there are many discussions in the, the phrases of this ayah, of this verse. I would like to dissect this verse very briefly so that you could get an idea about how big a role Arabic grammar plays when deriving a verdict from the Quran. The verse of wudu starts like this. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ In this verse, we have uh, many discussions. One of the discussions is about the washing of the hands. Allah says, فَغَسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ Wash your faces and wash your hands. إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ means up to the elbows. Wash your hands, your forearms, up to the elbows. You see, one, some of the sects in Islam those who don't follow Ahlul Bayt, what they understand from this verse is that Allah says, إِلَى المرافق. إِلَى The main meaning of إِلَى is إِنْتِهَاءُ الْغَايَة And إِنْتِهَاءُ الْغَايَة in this verse means that you have to finish the washing up to the elbow. The elbow is where you finish the washing. This means come this meaning comes from intihaul ghaya. But the followers of Ahlul Bayt, the Shia scholars, they claim that ila in this verse does not mean intihaul ghaya, but the meaning of ila is ma'a. Ila here has the same meaning of ma'a. Like we have verse a verse in the Quran that ila in that verse means ma'a. Like, لا تأكلوا أموالهم إلى أموالكم All the scholars, Muslim scholars, they claim that لا تأكلوا أموالهم إلى أموالكم إلى means معه So, Shia scholars claim that in the verse of wudu, in ayatul wudu, 
ila does not mean intihaul ghaya but it means ma'a so the meaning the a more accurate meaning would be like this wash your hands along with your elbows along with your elbows this is the the meaning of ma'a so these this is one of the differences that the followers of Ahlul Bayt have with other schools in, in Islamic law. Another discussion and difference in this per- particular verse is when you want to wipe your head, Allah says, وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ Wipe your heads. The followers of Ahlul Bayt, they claim that you have to wipe a part of your head. Just some of it with your fingers. Even one finger would be enough. One of the companions of Imam al-Sadiq named Zurara, he asked the Imam, why do you say that we have to wipe a part of our head? Not all of it like the other Scholars say, like the, those that don't follow Ahlul Bayt, they claim that, no, you have to wipe all of the head, all of it with both hands. But you, my Imam, Imam al-Sadiq, you claim that you have to, we have to wipe only a part of the head. Why is it? Imam, he, he answers, he says, because of the ba' wamsahu bi ru'usikum. The ba' is for tab'id. Meaning a part of something. Allah says, wipe a part of your head. So you see that if you want to understand what Imam al-Sadiq is referring to, you have to know Arabic grammar in an advanced level. You have to know what ba'ud tab'id is. Do we have ba'ud tab'id or do we don't? Do we not? So this needs... Uh, more understanding and more knowledge in Arabic grammar to understand this difference. But other schools of thought, they say, no, they, you have to wipe all the head. And they don't get what Ba'ud Tab'id is trying to indicate in this verse. And another discussion uh, uh, concerning this verse is the wiping of the feet you see, Allah says, وَمْسَحُ بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ أَرْجُلَكُمْ Wipe your heads and, and your feet. Wipe your hands and your feet. So what should we do? The Shia scholars, they say we have to wipe the feet. Just as the translations you, you could find have claimed that you wipe your, ha- your head and your feet but other follow the followers the, the those that don't follow of ahlul bayt other schools of islamic law and, and fiqh and jurisprudence they claim that you have to wash your feet why because in this verse arjulakum is mansub and Ru'usikum is not mansub. The Shia scholars, they claim that arjulakum is ma'atuf to ru'usikum. Because it's the closest ma'atufun alayh. Al-aqrabu yamna'u al-ab'ad. But other scholars, they say that arjulakum is mansub and ru'usikum is majroor. So you can't it can't be ma'atuf to ru'usikum, but it has to be ma'atuf to aidiyakum, which is mansub. They have the same i'rab as you know in atf. The ma'atuf has to have the same i'rab of the ma'atufun alayh. So they say the ma'atufun alayh is a very far word that is way behind ru'us. Uh, but the Shia scholars, they say, no, Ru'us is the closest ma'atufun alayh in this sentence and 
أرجلكم is عطف to رؤوس and in answer to that what what other scholars say that when they say they don't have the same Arab Shia, Shia scholars they say that uh, the answer is that we in Nahu we learn that it is okay to do عطف على المحل as you will learn this year that we do have عطفون على المحل or you've heard of it last year maybe so there's no problem in uh, the عطف عطف الرجل على الرؤوس there's no problem in it because it's عطفون على المحل and uh, you don't have to say it's عطف to something that is very far the معطفون عليه is very far no this is why as you could see, uh, we have gone into Arabic grammar very deep. The details, maybe you haven't heard of them. And this is why, if you want to understand the differences between these, uh, the verdicts in, in fiqh and jurisprudence, you have to increase your knowledge in Arabic grammar. You have passed the elementary level, supposedly, and you need to start the, the intermediate level inshallah this year and then after that you have to continue in advanced level and uh, one of the textbooks we in the Hawza for an intermediate level that is studied in the second year of the Hawza is Kitab Sharh ibn Aqil which is uh, a book that has been used as a textbook for many generations, a textbook for Arabic grammar. Since the book was written, till now it has been used in the Hawza for this level, the intermediate level. And then after it you go inshallah to other books in advanced level like Mughni al-Labib. But right now, inshallah, we will be starting the book Sharh ibn Aqil and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us finish this book in order to understand the, his book, his words in the Quran in order to understand the hadith we ask Allah to help us in gaining this knowledge to understand his words and the words of his messenger in Ahlul Bayt the best uh, as much as possible insha'Allah ta'ala wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh